Hey everyone, and welcome to World Heritage Journey, where today we're in Provence, the town of medieval fairs in northern France. So today we're in the Champagne region of northern France and we're in the town of Provence, which was home to medieval fairs. From the 12th and 13th century, this was an important trading hub between northern and southern Europe for things like textiles, furs and spices. There are some real innovations here and the beginning of pan-European trade as well and it's also really well preserved. Let's have a look around. During the medieval era, there were actually six different towns in the Champagne region that hosted medieval fairs. Provence was only one of them. But it's also the only one that made it onto the World Heritage List, and it's because of buildings like this stone one that you can see behind me. It's a barn or a warehouse that was used for holding textiles or wool, that sort of stuff, and it was used for accommodating merchants as well. It actually dates from the 12th century, which is really cool. So there were several innovations associated with the fairs here in the town of Provence and this behind me is one of them. Because it was ruled by the Counts of Champagne, they wanted to guarantee safety and security to attract more merchants. They built enormous walls so that trading could take place within a secure environment and they also used their personal armies to guarantee safety and security and to enforce contract disputes as well. They would also lower taxes and tolls throughout the Champagne region so that it didn't cost merchants an arm and a leg, metaphorically, to get to the fair. Here we can see the Caesar Tower, the tallest landmark in town and actually for the entire area as well. It dates from the 12th century when it was constructed as a symbol of the power of the Counts of Champagne. But despite its impressive appearance and looming presence, it doesn't appear to have been an important military fortification as it seems to have been used as a prison for much of its existence. I feel like I've actually learned something today because the economic history of medieval Europe isn't really something I knew much about, naturally. And to see everything really well preserved here and to really get a sense of what it would have been like, I think it's been fascinating and really, really informative. And it's interesting to see as well how the economic activity here eventually, over the centuries, snowballed into things like the European Union over a long time. But that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Joel on the road and I'll see you at the next World Heritage site.